Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> early this morning, just like you said. I got you. They was the one sorriest looking bunch of cowboys I ever did see. Yeah. Well, I guess I didn't really hurt any of them, Chester. Well, being banged on the head with a six-gun ain't the gentlest way to end the evening's pleasure. <laughs> but they'll live. Trouble is, they've been taking their pleasure too seriously. Yes, sir, but things quieted down a little last night after you locked up them five... They might have been real trouble otherwise. Declare, I don't know what's got into everybody lately, Mr. Young. Well, it goes like that, Chester. Things will be peaceful enough for a while till some wild outfit like this drag our herd is, Tom. And you got to come down on them hard and fast before they really get the bit in their teeth. Well, you sure did last night. Yeah, it isn't over yet. You Marshal Dillon? Yeah, that's right. My name's Rance. I'm glad to know you, Rance. I bossed the drag our herd up here from down around Monte Cora. That's in Texas, Marshal. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, well, uh, well, you better not go back. Oh? We might give you the kind of welcome you're giving us. What's your complaint, Rance? Buffalo and my men. Five of them come into camp this morning with blood in their hair. They said you'd done it. That's right, I did. And if I hadn't, they might have been shot. Or shot somebody else. Good thing for you, you took them one at a time. I'd have taken them anyway. Look, Rance, this town was on the edge of a riot last night, and I stopped it. I stopped it without any killing. It's a man's own business he wants to pull out his gun. Not around here, it isn't. Marshal, I can't ask men to come up the trail the way they do and take the drinking soda water and talking in whispers. What kind of a town is this, anyway? It's a good town. And your men can drink and gamble all they want in it, but they can't shoot the mirror off the wall at the Long Branch. And they can't grab townswomen on the street. And they can't break the bartender's arm in the oasis. And they can't offer to shoot anybody that tries to stop them. It isn't that kind of a town, Rance. For sure, they get a little frisky. There's no harm in it, I can see. Sooner or later, it'll lead to killing. And I gotta draw the line somewhere. So do I, Marshal. Well, what does that mean? I mean, I won't drive cattle to Dodge no more. I'll spread the word it's no good town. And you people can live off side busters and buffalo hunters. This place will start to death. I'm hired to keep the peace, Rance, any way I can. Keep it, then. We won't bother Dodge no more. Goodbye, Mark. Okay, sir. Do you think they're up to anyway? Well, Mr. Green told you it was a businessmen's meeting, didn't he? Yes, sir. And I expect they're worried about business. All right, Chester, I'll be out shortly. Yes, sir. me to come here. We all did, Marshal. Mr. Pepper, Mr. Howe, and, uh, well, all of us. Practically every man who does business in Dodge is here. I don't see Rance. He says he does business here, too. 
He sure does. And that's what we want to talk about. Uh Uh-huh. All right, go ahead. Well, we've had a meeting, Marshal. We've decided you've got to go easier on these cowboys. Oh, why? Well, we can't afford to lose all that business. That's why. There's always been some trouble the first day or so after I heard Rich's dodge. All I do is buffalo a few of the wildest, and gradually the rest of the cowboys calm down a little. Well, they won't stand for your slugging men and throwing them in jail. Huh? Nobody got killed last night, did they? Well, that isn't the point. According to the law, that's a pretty good point, Mr. Green. Well, now, the law's a fine thing, Marshal, but... Well, we're also interested in business. You're scared because one hard-headed trail boss has threatened you, Hal? You know, they're not all like rants. Well, there's no use to argue, Marshal. We've got our minds made up. You're too rough with those men. Mr. Green, would you like to run this town? Uh, Why, no, 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 of course not. Not me, but... We thought maybe if you'd kind of leave Dodge alone and do your work in the country, then we'd hire somebody the cowboys here take to a little better, uh, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. It's a good thing for me. I'm employed by the government, isn't it? Well, well now, Marshal, we're just making a suggestion, sort of. Sure. And you know what, Mr. Green? You men are acting like fools. Well, not just oh, well, It's true, it's true. There's only one way you'll learn. Gentlemen, I won't make any more arrests in Dodge until you come and ask me to. It's your town. And you can blow it right off the map if you want. Good day. Got the mail, Mr. Dillon. What there was of it. Oh, all right, Chester. Put it on the desk there. I'll look at it later. Yeah, I'm going to have a lot of time. Yes, sir, but you just wait till the word gets out that Dodge is wide open. Ain't going to be nothing but trouble. Yeah, maybe. This is the only way I can handle it, though. They won't listen to me otherwise. Excuse me, Marshal. Oh, well, what for? Well, I, I don't want to bother you, but I thought it better come see you. You're not bothering me. And I sure hope not. What can I do for you? Marshal, you don't know me, but I heard about you. Oh? Seems like a lot of people have lately. I know. Uh, Marshal, I... I uh, well, go ahead, mister. There's nothing to be afraid of. Uh... I'm the new constable. you what? The new constable. They picked me. I had to take it, Marshal. I'm, I'm so broke and all. Well, you sound like you're apologizing. Well, I reckon I am. I didn't want you to be mad at me. I need the money. Uh, that's why I'm doing it. That's all right. Somebody had to take the job. I didn't know they were going to call it constable. Well... They wanted to sound as peaceful as possible, I reckon. Yeah. What's your name, mister? Dillard. Dillard? Yes, sir. Dillard Band. Huh. Where are you from? Well, I used to be a cowboy. But uh, when I got so fat and all, I, well, I just sort of worked around wherever I can. I've been awful broke, Marshal. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yes, sir. Uh... How come you're not wearing a gun? Oh, shucks, Marshal. I don't never wear a gun. I don't even know how to use one very good. You're a whole lot better off without one. And I don't aim to get into any fights, Marshal. If there's any trouble, maybe I can sort of talk them out of it. Yeah, maybe. Well, Dillard, I, uh, I wish you luck. Well, thanks. Uh, I got to be going now, Marshal. I'm on pay already. So long. So long, Marshal. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I agree, Chester. Why, they'll ruin that poor fellow if he tries to stop him. He won't even raise his voice against him. But they sure might ruin Dodge.
the government paid for my office and the jail behind it, so I stayed there. It was sure that Constable Dillard Van, broke and fat and humble, wasn't going to manhandle any randy Texas cowboys and throw them behind bars. The first 24 hours passed peacefully enough. The Dragar outfit was busy moving their herd across the Arkansas and didn't get into town. But the next day, a new herd arrived. That night, it seemed like all of Texas had come to Dodge. By midnight, no man, unless he was armed and ready to fight, should have been out on the street. It was Doc who told us what it was like when he came into the office where Chester and I were sitting it out, playing a little two-handed 21. Well, it's a fine thing when the U.S. Marshal holds up in his office when men are getting shot up and knived all over town. I hope that's not true, Doc. Well, it is true. I just came back from trying to save the second victim. The first one's already dead. Cowboys or citizens? Cowboys. They're citizens. I suppose those dunder heads would have been in here on their knees begging you for help. I don't want them on their knees, Doc. I know, Matt, but it's getting worse. Why, that last fella, they wouldn't even let me bring him back to my office. They said he might as well die right there on the floor of the Texas tree. They did. They sure did. And they ran me right out of there. They what? They took me by the arms and they half carried me as far as the door. I called them everything I could think of while they were doing it to them. Doctor, you think that man's dead yet? He will be soon. If I don't get him to where I can work on him. All right, we're going over there and get him. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. I told him I wouldn't make any arrests and I won't. But nobody's going to push Doc around and stand between him and a wounded man. I wish it was a tunnel under the street. I don't see Dillard no worse. He ought to be out here talking his head off if that's his plan. Well, he's lucky if he doesn't get hung tonight. Watch your gun, Chester. Don't let anybody grab it. I'm carrying my hand on it. Um... He's right over there, Max. Lying in front of the bar. All right. All right, get out of there. Will you move, please? Come on. All right, go ahead, Doc. See if he's still alive. Well, he doesn't look very good. I thought you'd quit, Marshal. No, I haven't quit, Rance. What are you doing here, then? The man's dying. With a fair fight, we believe in dying where we fall, Marshal. Don't need no help. I won't even argue with you, Rance. But the first man that interferes with Doc will die on his feet. And if you can't understand it any other way, just put it that Doc's a friend of mine. Is that clear enough? No, 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 man. No, no, let's not have any trouble here. Now, let's talk it over and settle this peacefully. Could I... Uh... Oh, gee, Marshal. Hello, Dillard. I'm having a terrible time, Marshal. Yeah, I can see that. Matt? Yeah. How is he, Doc? Bad. But I might save him. Okay. Dillard? Yes, sir? Help Chester carry that man over to Doc's office. Huh? Sure, Marshal, sure. Leave him be, Constable. That's enough, Rance. Let him die in peace, I say. You know, Rance, I'd throw you in jail, but I said I wouldn't make any arrests. And why don't you get out of here while you still can? I'll get out. <laughs> I'll shoot the first man that touches the gun. All right, Chester. Dillon, get moving. Yes, we got him, sir. You lead the way, Doc. Yeah, well, well, let's hurry. That man won't live long if we don't. Thicker than ever, Mr. Dillon. Just come here and take a look. Yeah. Yeah, another hour and they'll really 
be out of hand. Look, Your Honor. There's Miss Kitty coming across the street. What? Now, you wait here, Chester. Yeah. Phew, it's getting worse. Hello, Chester. Miss Kitty? You shouldn't have gone out in the street, Kitty. Well, it's no worse than the Long Branch. Then you ought to go home. I'm going. I'm all through till somebody puts a lid on this town. That Brant is over there right now, Matt, getting drunk and calling for blood. There's been enough blood around here already. How's that... Cowboy, the one you got out of there. Well, Doc was down a while ago. Said he took a bullet out. Said he thinks he has a chance now. Oh, good. You say Rance is working up trouble, huh? Yeah, he's trying. I guess he didn't take to your bashing him on the head. Well, it quieted things down for a little while, anyway. I sure got that poor constable treed. Dillard, what's his name? He seemed like a nice enough fellow. I sort of hope they don't hurt him. Well, when I left, they had him dancing on the bar. He looked about to cry. Well, that's harder on the bar than his on Dillard. He's about the fattest peace officer I ever did see. Well, there's going to be fatter than ever after tonight. Every time he opens his mouth to talk, somebody pours a glass of beer on him. It's sort of pitiful, Matt. That's worse than that, Kitty. Yeah, I know. That's why I got out of there. You can kind of feel when a crowd like that starts to get real mean. Well, I guess you listen to him out there. Well, I'm not even staying in town tonight. I'm going out to Moss Smalley. That's a good idea, Kitty. Chester, you go along with her. I better stick around. Here. All right, so what? What's Mr. Green? Oh, my land. Look at Miller. Uh, my fellow beat me up. He beat me up bad. He certainly did. Marshal... We came here to ask you... Wait a minute, Mr. Green. Chester, take Dillard up to Doc's place. I sure will. Come on, Billy. Oh, thanks. Now, Chester, yes, you come back for Kitty here. Huh? All right, sir. All right, Mr. Green, you wanted to ask me something? You've got to stop them, Marshal. Another man's been killed. Mr. Howe's brother. He caught a stray bullet out back of the Texas Trail. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I wondered why Mr. Howe wasn't here. He told me to tell you that he'll trust your judgment from now on. We shouldn't have interfered, Marshal, but we're all behind you now. Certainly. You'll do something, won't you, Marshal? All right. It's pretty late, but I'll try it. All right, thank you, Marshal. I'll start with Rance. He's the worst of the lot. I'll go get him and throw him in jail. But before I go, I want every saloon keeper in Dodge to put out his lights and close up. We'll do that. Now, you gentlemen have to pass the word for that. I don't want to be seen until I go for a rant. We'll do it, Marshal. We'll do it right now. All right, then get going before it's too late. Singing doesn't say... an hour while Green and the others spread the word to close up the saloons. The lights gradually went out up and down the street. Then I left the office alone. I found Rance in front of the long branch. I was able to reach him before I was recognized. He was stupid drunk, but he was being held up by a man who was fairly sober. <laughs> well, the marshal's back. Let's shoot him, men. You better get out of here, marshal. We ain't in no mood to fool. Neither am I. All right, the street's closed, gentlemen. You go on back to your camp. Oh, It'll be open again tomorrow night. You're welcome to come back then. There won't be no town by tomorrow. Let's set it afire, men. Shut up, Rand. I won't shut up. All right, you're going to jail. A what? You leave him be, Marshal. You want to fight, mister? Rance here's too drunk. He wouldn't have a chance. But you might. He's right, Pete. I'll never make it. You draw on him. Go on, shoot him. Well, I'm waiting, cowboy. 
I ain't no gunfighter. Go on, you coward. No. Why should I die? This ain't my business anyway. Will somebody do it then? I'll fight any man here. And I'll fight him fair. And I'll have to try it myself. When I don't be a fool, Rance, he'll kill you. Get out of my way. No, you don't. Give me that gun, Pete. I'll keep your gun. Look out now, or I'll slug you. That was smart of you, mister. But he's still going to jail. Sure got a lot of nerve, Marshal, Buck, in a crowd like this. Now, I'm one man against any other one man here. I'm not bucking a crowd. You cowboys aren't built that way. I've been in Texas, too, mister. Guess you win, Marshal. Well, it looks that way. Now, you want to take Rance to jail, or do you want me to do it? His head might be less lumpy tomorrow if I do it, Marshal. Start walking, Rance. and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Ken Lynch, Bartlett Robinson, Vic Perrin, and Howard Culver. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. <laughs> George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on gun smoke. Miller with tonight's guest stars on the CBS Radio Network.